Once we talk a little bit about this whataboutism, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but we just booted somebody out of the chat right here hmm. who's all upset about our review of the Women's War Games match. And his argument was, but AEW did blood and guts. You like that? What? what in God's name does AEW blood and guts have to do with the Women's War Games match? Name one thing. Whether there were weapons in both matches. Dude, my issue with the Women's War Games match has nothing to do with Io Shirai getting pinned. It has nothing to do with there being weapons in the match. Dave thought there were too many weapon shots. I didn't mention that one single solitary time in my review. This has zero to do with AEW. If AEW does a War Games match and the baby faces get the advantage and the baby faces have the advantage throughout the entire match and then the baby faces lose clean at the end, yeah, I'm going to have a problem with it because it'd be stupid. When that happens and I talk about how great it is, then you can do your what about ism. But what in the world does anything AEW have to do with that women's war games match? Nothing. Not I didn't mention thing. it one single time. I didn't mention the AEW women's division. I didn't mention anything about blood and guts. I didn't mention anything about anything. Nope. This is on its own merits. It was a stupidly booked match that didn't make any sense. Somebody broke their arm for this dumb match. Everybody in there was killing themselves. In a match that had no heat, which, by the way, the main event did have heat, that had people say, well, clearly crowd sweetening. Well, bro, where was the crowd sweetening in that opening match? I didn't hear it. It seems to me like if the main event had heat because of crowd sweetening, why didn't you turn it on at the opener? Was the machine broken? Uh, maybe the problem was there was no heat among the live fans there because the match didn't make a lick of sense. It was a preposterously booked match. Whoever came up with the idea for the women, the babyface women having the advantage, they should stop booking. Go do something else with your life. You know what you should do? As somebody on Twitter noted last night, why don't you go build a car with square wheels? Because, hey, we've been having round wheels forever. I think it's time to do something different. Let's make the wheels square. And you know what? On Twitter, that would be, if WWE built a car with square wheels... It would be praised on Twitter because, hey, they're trying something different. Even though the car doesn't drive. Hey, at least they're trying something different. Yeah, they tried something different last night, which actually wasn't different because in Impact and TNA, they used to do war games where the baby faces had the man advantage. And you know what? It sucked every single time. So they didn't even try something new. They ripped off a concept that has never worked for obvious reasons. And now I have to people have to hear people telling me, oh, well, you know, it was a good idea, and you're just mad because AW. You peanut brains. Now, aside from that disaster, that booking disaster, that booking atrocity, I tell you what was good on this show. Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa. You know what this show was? It was a show where I thought that most of the matches were going to underachieve based on what the odds makers thought. One of them did. The women's war games match. Why? Because the baby faces had the advantage, and these dummies didn't come up with an idea to make it make sense. They just gave the women the advantage, which is a dumb idea to start with. Now, Thatcher and Ciampa, if you listened to the show yesterday, I was wrong. I thought, you know what? It's going to be good, but it's not going to be as good as the odds makers think. I was wrong. In fact, it was better than I thought. It was better than the odds makers thought. This was my actual favorite match on the show. Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. Great match. Ciampa pinned him. I was in love with this match. I'd watch it ten times. Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis. I did say yesterday, odds makers thought a star and a half. I said it's going to be better than that. I think I said maybe two and a half stars or something like that. Guess what? Another one that overachieved. We basically had Cameron Grimes versus Sam Shaw. Two good wrestlers. One of them's a great wrestler. Just having a brawl that happened to involve a strap. And it was really good. Overachieved. Gargano Ruff and Damian Priest. I didn't like 25 scream killers running in. But hey, that's the storyline they wanted to do. All of... Retribution is now working for Johnny Gargano, apparently. They've given up on the main roster, rightfully. And they're actually successful here in NXT. The main 
Scream Killer ended up being, as I expected, Austin Theory. He's now teaming up with Johnny Gargano. And they had a fun match. Johnny Gargano's the new North American champion, beating Leon Ruff. All that for what? Nothing. But that's what they did. And then Team Mac v. Undisputed Era. Just a bunch of great workers killing each other. They did the psychology right. The heat was there. They went too long. It did not need to go 45 minutes. Ten minutes shorter it would have been a significantly better match. But I liked the match. I was never bored. I was surprised sometimes that it kept going. But at the end of the day, my only... It's not even a complaint. I just don't understand why Undisputed Era won. And I don't know where they go from here. They've been running roughshod on everybody for years now. And now they won this match. So, I mean, my presumption is they won because Kyle O'Reilly got the victory. And they're going to go back to Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor. Maybe turning that into a three-way, actually. Because Karrion Cross should be back at any time. But overall, aside from the women's match booking, I really like the show. And Mike, any thoughts? I thought the show was really good. I really did, and you know, I echo all of your thoughts on the women's match. Most people with a brain do. Uh, if you want to give WWE credit for trying something new, which they didn't, then you also need to call them out for whatever failings that they had. And the booking of that match from day one was a fail, period. <laughs> you know, and how they went about it last night. The baby faces were the ones throwing weapons in the ring. You know, they're the ones who wanted this, you know, match anyway because Shotzi's tank got crushed. And then we had the superfluous ladder match to get there. And it was way too much. It was way too long. And that's not to denigrate the women because they busted their ass. And that's what last night was. It was a celebration of workers in NXT who were not held down by their storylines, you know, and not blamed for the finishes you just look at the work that they put in and everybody absolutely busted their ass the champa thatcher feud has sucked for me because i thought timothy thatcher has looked like a goof in this and there was still last night i really wish especially with the way that the pin went especially the way that the referee was positioned that thatcher would have had his leg outside the ring so he has something to hold over Ciampa and everybody else as a heel to say that I haven't just been eviscerated in all this. And I know they're going to build him back up. He's going to be breaking his students' arms and all that sort of stuff. At least I hope they do because he has not looked very good in this. But the match last night was why I've been so frustrated with the booking because you could have led to this without all this other nonsense, without making Thatcher look weak, without making Ciampa make the locker room look weak and just have two guys out there kicking each other's ass. And that's what the main event was for me. I know we can't do blood back in like we did back in the day with war games. I'm fine with that, but I'm I'm great with intensity and just watching four people want to beat the hell out of each other. And that's what we got in the main event. We did get a lot of extra stuff because that's where we're at now. That nesty plunge by Pat McAfee could have killed him. Forget about the the flip off the top. You know, going backwards through the the table could have been trouble, but. That was a really good match. Loomis and Grimes, like you mentioned, way was way better than I thought it was going to be. And the only thing I can say about the North American title situation is I hope it's all over with now. And you can try to do something with Leon Ruff that actually makes him a legitimate person. Maybe give him a teammate. Him and Jake Atlas can go on a search for wins or something like that. But, you know, Gargano and Priest, I was good with it as a feud. They didn't need Leon Ruff to extend it. They decided to do that switch the belt fine but you know what if i get more of that i'm okay with it let's just kill some of the nonsense a little bit if you love these video clips head down there to the bottom right hand side of the screen and click join for just seven dollars and 99 cents per month you get full access to all of the episodes over 300 at current count full-length episodes of the brian and Vinny show wrestling observer live and figure four daily with both landstorm and filthy tom lawler you can also hit that subscribe button and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available